the Kraft Foods Company presents Harold Perry as the Great Gildersleeve. Gildersleeve is brought to you by the Kraft Foods Company, makers of Parquet Margarine. Millions of women all over America serve Parquet because it tastes so good. Why, Parquet tastes like it should cost twice as much. To market, to market, to get some Parquet. Home again, home again, try it today. You like it, you love it, like millions who say their favorite margarine is. P-A-R-K-A-Y. Parquet margarine made by Kraft. Well, after his little flyer in the ladies' hat business, the great Gildersleeve has finally settled down to earth again. Yes, he's given up his interest in Adeline's hat salon, and he's decided to plunge back into the water department. We find our man of action up bright and early this morning, charging down the stairs. Bertie! Bertie! Yes, sir? You up already, Mr. Gilsley? Of course, Bertie. Is breakfast ready? Breakfast? No, sir. It ain't due for a half hour yet. You didn't tell me you was getting up early. Well, it is a little earlier than usual, but I've got a lot of things to do, Bertie. Yes, sir. I woke the children up, too. They'll be right down. So if you'll just hurry breakfast along a little. Yes, sir. I'd have had it ready now if you just let me know. You can have breakfast any time you want it. All you got to do is let me know. <laughs> yes. Well, this is a great idea, getting an early start like this. I'll really make up for lost time. Ah, good morning, children. Uh, hi. Anki, why do we have to have breakfast at this unearthly hour? Now, Marjorie, it's only half an hour earlier than usual. Yeah, I need my sleep, Unc. I'm just a growing boy. Yes, indeed, Leroy. Won't hurt you children to get up early once in a while. It's good for you. Oh, sure. Gee, breakfast isn't even ready yet. Well, it will be in a minute. Come on now. Let's sit down at the table. Okay. Mm -hmm. Uncle Mort, what's gotten into you all of a sudden? What? Nothing, my dear. It's just that I realize I've been neglecting my duties as water commissioner these past few weeks. Well, that's all over. From now on, I'm going to devote my full time to the water department. I'm going to be a water commissioner that Summerfield can be proud of. Hooray! Thank you. It, Leroy, watch it, young man. I'm serious about this. I'm even going to work before I get to the office. On my way down there, I'm going to collect a water bill. You are? Yeah, it's three months overdue. Some singing teacher, a Madam Bertha Kimmel, probably very bohemian, can't be bothered with water bills. Well, I'll show her. She'll either pay this bill or she'll have to dig a well in the backyard. That's great, Unc. When do we eat? Eat? Oh, yes. I wonder what Bertie's doing out there. Bertie! Yes, sir, Mr. Gill, please. Bertie, we're waiting for breakfast. <laughs> yes, sir. Isn't it ready yet? No, sir, it ain't ready. But it would have been if you told me beforehand. All you got to do is let me know. Yes, well... I'll... I ain't got no way of knowing when you want breakfast unless you tell me. All you got to do is let me know. Okay, Bertie. I ain't no mind reader. I know that. I ain't no gypsy fortune teller. Bertie, I... I ain't got no crystal ball. I understand, Bertie. All you got to do is let me know. Please, Bertie. You can have breakfast any time you want it. Well, thank you, Bertie. If you want it, I can get it ready in the middle of the night. All you got to do is let me know. <laughs> Yes, I should have let her know. Uh, that's Madam Kimmel's place, I guess. That little cottage in there. Hmm. Place looks pretty run down. Singing teacher, huh? Oh, my goodness, listen to her. Sounds like the noon whistle down at the sawmill. Come on, Madam Kimmel, stop gargling and answer the door. Yeah? What is it, please? Oh, uh, Mrs. Kimmel. I mean, Madam Kimmel? Yeah? I'm Throckmorton P. Gildersleeve. Throckmorton P. Gildersleeve. What a funny name. <laughs> uh, 
Yes, well, I wanted to talk to you about the water. Water? Uh, thank you, I don't need any. I have plenty. No, no, I want to talk to you about your water bill. You owe us some money. Oh, I owe you money. <laughs> in fact, I've got your bill right here. You owe us... Come in, come in. I do not understand these things. You can explain it, no? I can explain it, yes. Good to come in. Well, thank you. You see, Madam Kimmel, you owe for three months. That comes sit to... Sit down, sit down, Mr. Gildersleeve. Make yourself comfortable. Well... Here, I take the birdcage off the chair. Oh, uh, yeah. Can't sit on the birdcage. <laughs> Madam, I'm a very busy man, and I'm in a hurry to get to my office. Unless you want us to... Well, if you want the service... I must ask you to pay this bill in full. Nine dollars and fifty cents. Mr. Gildersleeve, I'll tell you a little secret. What's that? I do not have any money. <laughs> you don't have any money? No. Oh, but do not worry. I have plenty soon. Then I get my call from the Metropolitan Opera Company. Opera Company? Yeah. I'm a singing teacher only temporarily. I am really a star of the opera. You are? But yeah. I sing them all in my day. The cigarette girl in Carmen. Yeah. <laughs> Madam Kimmel. Oh, Mimi in La Boheme. Yeah. sing all day. Yes, but Madam Kimmel, about this water And bill. then I sang Brunhilda in Siegfried. Mm -hmm. I say, ah, ah, ah. Why, when they heard me, they heard me all over Europe. I'll bet they did. <laughs> so, when they make out the contract, send me the money. I pay your water bill like nothing. Okay? Yeah, no, it isn't okay. <laughs> that is, if you can't pay your water bill, we'll simply have to disconnect your service. It's a rule of the department. Oh? Well, I'm sorry, Madam Kimmel, but business is business. Oh, Mr. Gildersleeve, you American men, all you talk is business, business. Well... And you have the face of an artist, too. Huh? <laughs> I knew a tenor in Naples who looks just like you. A very handsome man. Really? <laughs> but of course, you don't sing. Well, I sing a little. Indian love call, things like that. You do? Oh, I might have known it. Mr. Gildersleeve, sing for Madame Kimmel. Oh, I... Come on, stand up. <laughs> now, sing. Well, just one chorus. <clears throat> <laughs> when I'm calling you... Will you answer too? Mr. Gildersleeve. Yeah? Why, you have a wonderful voice. Why, you could sing opera. Me? Of course. Why, you even have a stomach like an opera singer. <laughs> well, I could never really sing opera. Not now, but if you work and study, oh, oh, I have an idea. I could give you singing lessons. What? I make you another Caruso. Well, thank you, but I don't think... I can see you now at the Metropolitan. You are the Toreador in Carmen, in the red cape. You sing. You are a sensation. When you finish, the audience applauds wildly. Bravo, Gildersleeve! Bravo, Gildersleeve! <laughs> well, I guess it wouldn't hurt to take just a few lessons. <laughs> If Margaret Truman can do it, I can. <laughs> Good, now, why don't we start right now? Well, I ought to get down to the water department, but what the heck? All right, we commence. Oh, I almost forgot. I charge $10 a lesson in advance. $10? Yeah. For an opera lesson, that is nothing. Yeah, nothing. Oh, yeah. Well, uh, in that case, uh, here you are. Thank you. Now, I give it back to you. What? For the water bill. Nine fifty, was it not? Yes, but... Uh, there you are. You may keep the change. Uh, change. Now, yeah. recommence the lesson. Uh, sing out to me, please. From the diaphragm. Uh, oh. Good. Now, this time, what's your legato? Huh? Oh, yes, my legato. Oh. oh. Kimmel 
told me this morning I should practice for an hour after dinner. Better get right on it. I'm going to be an opera star someday. Don't you feel well? Huh? Oh, what's the matter? Is that a stomachache? Leroy, I feel fine. You got indigestion, Mr. Gilsleeve? I'll get the bacon soda. For heaven's sake, there's nothing wrong with me. I'm just practicing my singing lesson. Huh? Singing lesson? Yes, it's just possible that I may go in the grand opera. Opera? Uncle Moore. Are you kidding? No, I'm not. Someday you'll all be shouting, Bravo, Gildersleeve. Oh, oh for corn's sake. Opera? What next? Oh. Good morning, Peavy. Oh, hello, Mr. Gildersleeve. <laughs> what can I do for you, cigars? Uh, no, thank you, Peavy. I've given up cigars. Oh? Economizing again? <laughs> no, it isn't that. I just don't want to take any chances of spoiling my legato. How's that? Yeah. <laughs> Skip it, Peavy. I want you to listen to this. All right. La, 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 la. Well? Yeah, what? Right. <laughs> How does that sound? Sounds like the scale. Yep. I know it's the scale, but doesn't it sound different? No, it sounds like the same old scale to me. <laughs> I'm not talking about that. Didn't you notice something different about my voice? Peavy, I'm singing from the diaphragm now. Oh. Well, every man do his own choice, I guess. <laughs> yes, but I'm taking singing lessons. Well, that's a good idea. I've noticed you've been sounding a little flat lately. Is that so? Well, for your information, Richard Q. Peavy, one of these days I may be singing in grand opera. Opera? My, my. What are you going to sing? The trolley song from Carmen? Oh. <laughs> you get it? Trolley song from Car- Carmen. Carmen, yes. yes. <laughs> that was a little witticism. Trolley, car. I know, Peavy. I thought it was rather you. Oh. Well, well, well. Good morning. Oh, good morning, Judge. Hello, Hooker. Gilday. Well, if it isn't our esteemed water commissioner. Yes, sir. Well, I'm glad I found you two jolly boys together. I have some wonderful news. Oh? What's that? Our quartet has been asked to sing at a big social affair at the Moose Hall next Friday night. Well. You ought to be a big hit there, Gilday. You look like a moose. <laughs> Very funny. They've asked me to take charge, so I'm calling a rehearsal at our clubhouse tonight. We'll go over some of our quartet numbers. So I'll see you both there at 8 o'clock sharp. I'm afraid you won't see me there, Horace. What? Yeah, looks as though the Jolly Boys Quartet will have to struggle along without me from now on. Gilday, what are you talking about? Well, that kind of singing is all right for you fellas, but I've got to save my voice for finer things. What? Mr. Gildersleeve is studying for an operatic career. Opera? That's the silliest idea I ever heard of. Oh, I don't know. Some people think I sound just like Caruso. Caruso? Yes. You're looking at a future star of Grand Opera. You sing grand opera? Why, you can't even remember the words of my gal, Sal. Oh, now look here, you old goat. Gentlemen, gentlemen. Just because I won't sing in your small-time quartet. Mr. Gildersleeve, that's an insult to the Jolly Boys. Yes. You fellows are just jealous. You'll be sorry someday when I leave Summerfield and go to New York. You'll miss me. <laughs> well, no, I wouldn't say that. Oh. <laughs> Goodbye. <laughs> Bertie, you keep talking about testing parquet margarine. Uh Uh-huh. Well, you eat parquet all the time anyway. What's the reason for testing it? Well, I guess I just like to. Like when I test it out on them sweet potatoes before I serve them. I sure do enjoy that test. Same way when I try parquet out on hot waffles. That's a wonderful test, I'm telling you. You mean you enjoy testing parquet's taste? (laughs) Yes, sir. I keep on testing parquet because that margarine tastes so good. Tastes like it should cost twice as much. No doubt about it, Bertie. Parquet has a wonderfully light, delicate flavor. A luxury flavor. And friends, here's the reason for it. 
Parquet margarine is prepared like a rare luxury food from the selected products of American farms. Yet for all its delightful flavor, Parquet costs only about half as much as the most expensive spreads. So, friends, we'd like to ask you to try Parquet on your own waffles or rolls or bread. See if you don't agree with Bertie about the wonderful flavor of Parquet margarine. See if you don't agree that Parquet tastes like it should cost twice as much. That's P-A-R-K-A-Y, Parquet margarine made by Kraft. Budding opera star, the great Gildersleeve, is a little upset tonight. He's still determined to win fame, but he doesn't want to lose the friendship of the Jolly Boys. Right now, he's climbing the stairs to their clubhouse over Floyd's barber shop. Better go up and apologize to Peavy and the judge, I guess. Hope they're not still mad at me. After all, the Jolly Boys are the best friends I've got, even if I can't sing with them anymore. Listen to him. Oh, my goodness. The judge is off key again. They do need me, all right. Well, it's too bad. I've got to save my voice for my career. I just have to understand. Well, you are sweet. Well, hello, fellas. <laughs> now, look who's here. Hello, Judge. Hello, Floyd. How do you do, Caruso? <laughs> uh, how are you, Chief? Well, how's the big opera star tonight? Well, <laughs> uh, hello, Peavy. Peavy, aren't you going to say anything to me? Go, Amy Fontanati, do Aren't you in the wrong place, Gildy? This isn't the Metropolitan Opera House. No, we're just this small time quartet. Now, fellas, you've got to let me explain. I'm still a jolly boy, just because I can't sing with you. Oh, we couldn't expect you to sing with us. you got to save your voice for that high-class stuff like the quartet from Riga Mortis. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> fellas, you've got to understand. Well, if you'll excuse us, Gildy, we're rehearsing our program for Friday night. All right, I'll just hang around, and when you get through, fellas, maybe we can have a little card game. Huh? What do you say? Well... Mm, I don't know, Commissioner. What? Gildy, I'm afraid I have a painful duty to perform. Hmm? Since you seem to feel that you are too good to sing in our Jolly Boys Quartet, perhaps you're too good to associate with our humble members. But, Judge, I don't feel that way. Well, we do. So on behalf of the Jolly Boys, I accept your resignation. Resignation? You but, Judge... made your choice, Gilday. You've chosen fame instead of friendship. So there's nothing more to say except goodbye. Judge, fellas... Goodbye, Mr. Gildersleeve. Come on, Commish. And best wishes from Peavy's Pharmacy. Oh. <laughs> so you just go your way, Gildy, and we'll go ours. Well, okay, if that's the way you feel. It's all right with me. I don't care. I got a lot of other friends. I don't have to be a jolly boy. I'll join the moose. <laughs> Yeah. My, you're home early. Hmm. I guess so. <laughs> Uncle Mort, what's the matter? Marjorie, your old uncle is no longer a jolly boy. What? They don't want to have anything to do with me. Just because I can't sing in the quartet anymore. Can't sing in the quartet? Why not? Well, I have to save my voice for finer things. Oh, Unky, you're not taking this opera thing seriously. <laughs> There's nothing funny about it, Marjorie. Madame Kimmel thinks my voice has a lot of promise. Someday I might sing at the Metropolitan. Oh, sure. Uncle Mort, why don't you forget all about this opera business and make up with the Jolly Boys? You know you want to. Well, if they want to be like that, it's all right with me. They'll be sorry someday. You poor darling. Good night, Uncle Mort. Good night, my dear. 
nobody understands. Well, I guess we great artists have to go through these things. I wonder if Nelson Eddy had this much trouble. <laughs> well, let everybody laugh at me now. I'll show them. If I work hard, study, someday I will be singing at the Metropolitan. You betcha. I can just see it. It's opening night. I'm making my debut. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. I'm speaking to you from the Diamond Horseshoe of the Metropolitan Opera House. A capacity crowd is here tonight to hear the debut of the sensational new American baritone, Rock Morton P. Gildersleeve. Among the special guests here tonight are the Jolly Boys from Summerfield. In just a moment, we're ready to begin. A hush falls over the expectant crowd. The curtains part. Mr. Gildersleeve is standing there confident, poised, his manly figure clothed in a red cape. He's about to sing the trolley song from Carmen. Uh, correction. The Toreador song. A tiempo, corredor, corredor, non abriar que uno chato pador, había mira intento, y que das pet amor, corredor, das pet, das pet amor, corredor, corredor. Somebody at the door. Darn it. Just when I was taking my sixth curtain call. Wonder who this is. Good evening, Mr. Gildersleeve. Oh, Madam Kimmel, come in. Uh, thank you. I just sang at the Metropolitan. In Italian, too. What? Uh, uh, nothing. <laughs> Sit down. Uh, thank you. Well, this certainly is a pleasant surprise. You're coming to see me? Uh, Mr. Gildersleeve, I've come to say goodbye. Goodbye? Uh, yeah, I just received a wire. I got my job in New York. Well, that's very nice, but what about my singing lessons? You were going to make me an opera star. Mr. Gildersleeve, Madam Kimmel must tell you the truth. For one million years you could study and still you couldn't sing opera. What? <laughs> but you said my voice had promise. I know. Madam Kimmel is a naughty girl. Hmm. What could I do, Mr. Gildersleeve? It was either tell you that, or you turn off my water. <laughs> Your voice isn't bad. It's good enough for singing in what you call barbershop quartet. But for the opera, no. <laughs> I'm sorry, Mr. Gildersleeve, but don't feel bad. For 20 years, I've worked to be an opera star. I never made it. But, Madam Kimmel, you said you sang an opera all over Europe. I did, but only in the chorus, yeah. in the back row. Mm -hmm. Now I'm too fat even for the chorus. Yeah. <laughs> so I'm taking this job as a cook in a little restaurant in New York. Uh, a cook? Yeah, I cook wonderful European style. Uh -huh. I work a while in New York, and I send you back your $10. And I hope you forgive Madam Kimmel for telling you a little fib. Oh, that's all right. Ah, oh, you are a nice man. Any day, Mr. Gildersleeve, maybe we are happier this day. Me a cook, you a water commissioner. Uh -huh. Goodbye, my friend. Yeah, goodbye. <laughs> goodbye! A goodbye! A goodbye! Goodbye. I wonder 
wonder if the Jolly Boys will take me back. Yeah, you got to give me another chance. What's that, Mr. Gildersleeve? I was all wrong, fellas. Madam Kimmel told me I couldn't be an opera singer in a million years. I could have told you that, Gildy. <laughs> yeah, you were right. This is where I belong, fellas, in the Jolly Boys Quartet. Please take me back. What do you think, gentlemen? Well, I guess the commissioner's learned his lesson. Sure. Welcome back, Commissioner. Gee, thanks, Jolly Boys. It's all right, Gildy. Yeah. <laughs> And believe me, I'll never do another silly thing like this as long as I live. Well, now, I wouldn't say that. Burp. <laughs> Come on, fellas. For it's always fair weather When good fellas get together Sure is. With a sigh on the table <laughs> And... Taste comes first in a spread for bread. And parquet margarine has such a light, delicate, luxury flavor that you might not even suspect how nourishing it is. It might not even occur to you that every pound of parquet is reinforced with 15,000 units of essential vitamin A. Next time you're at the store, get parquet for its luxury flavor, its unusually large nutritional value. Yes, and for its economy, too. After all, this same delicious margarine costs only about half as much as the most expensive spreads. That's P-A-R-K-A-Y, Parquet, the margarine made by Kraft. Parquet, the margarine that tastes like it should cost twice as much. Leroy? Yeah? What do you want, Unc? Leroy, there's something very special about this week. You know what it is? Sure. Washington's birthday, and I got out of school yesterday. Uh, well, uh, that's one thing. But this is also American Brotherhood Week. What's that, Unc? Well, it's just a way of reminding us that all Americans, young and old, must join in the fight against religious and racial prejudice. You can do your part at school, Leroy, by judging your classmates as individuals, not by their religion or nationality. Remember, it has taken many different kinds of people, Leroy, to make America great. Brotherhood is more than just a word. It means all of us working together in the American tradition of tolerance, freedom, and understanding. Let's all remember that, folks. Good night. The Great Gildersleeve is played by Harold Perry. The show was written by Gene Stone and Jack Robinson with music by Jack Meekin. Included in the cast... Uh, Walter Tetley, Mary Lee Robb, Lillian Randolph, Earl Ross, Richard Legrand, Hope Emerson, Ken Christie, and Arthur Q. Bryan. This is John Wall saying goodnight for the Kraft Foods Company, makers of the famous line of Kraft quality food products. And be sure to listen in next Wednesday and every Wednesday for the further adventures of the Great Gildersleeve. Here's a real bargain, an all-aluminum silent butler. A dollar and a half retail value, and it's yours for only 50 cents and a Pabstet label. This silent butler is handsome enough for a gift, and it's big. Has a deep, generous size bowl, a long handle, a hinged top that opens at your touch. It's just the thing for collecting cigarette ashes or crumbing your table. Now, today, just get either regular Pabstet or the new Pabstet two-pound economy loaf. Your dealer will give you full details about getting this beautiful aluminum silent butler valued at one dollar and a half for only 50 cents.